Okay, so it's April of 2016. I'm Jeff Best. It's my father, Duke Best. And I'm just going to ask him some questions about his life. So, uh, we're here at a campground in Oregon. And so, first question I have for him is about his family. Mr. Best, my father, what can you tell me about your family? Well, my dad's name was Ed, my mother's name was Lil, and they raised me in Cicero, Illinois, and I left there when I was 25, when I married a lady called Marlene from Maywood. Marlene from Maywood was my wife, and we had three children, started with Jeff, and then we had Leslie, about 18 months later, then we had Gregory. And he was born quite a bit later than that. Let me stop you right there. Which of those children was your favorite, sir? I choose not to answer that one because it would incriminate me. I just don't want to get into favorites because I don't believe I ever had really one. Uh, they're all great, and they've all earned their way. They are Con all graduates. Congratulations, you answered that correctly. Oh. I'm politically correct here today. PC is what I'm saying. Is there any one story you'd like to relate about uh, your family life? <clears throat> Except that I'm kind of proud of being able to provide them with what they needed. And although their mother was probably more instrumental in their becoming what they are, they're all wonderful kids, uh, I can take a little bit of credit for it. And she's, of course, dead now, or she would be here to complain that I'm not telling it straight. But since she's not alive, I can go ahead and tell you, I can make up a lot of things. Our mother, God rest her soul, she used to complain sometimes. She did, and often. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I weathered all that. I was <laughs> able to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. So, in business, uh, what kind of business did you do during your lifetime? Well, I started out selling shoes in a family shoe store when I was 14 which was illegal at the time. It, the city of Chicago was very lax on enforcing rules about kids working. So for the first two or three years of my life, I was selling shoes and then I picked up on other things uh, until I finally got a good job selling office machines for Olivetti, the company out of Italy. And I was with them for about seven or eight years, I think it was eight years, until I answered an ad in the Lansing, Michigan paper for a boat salesman that would call on people that were dealing with dealing the boats, and I was working for the factory that was called Owens Yacht Company. And I worked for them for like seven years, and then I switched over to a couple other boat companies, and I left the boat business with 29 years of service about 10, 12 years ago. And then I started my own business, and if you want to read more about that, you can pick up the book in Amazon, a little commercial here, and it's called Blowing on the Embers, Embers, E-M-B-E-R-S. But it's not expensive. You can just go on Amazon and you'll find it. Yeah, do you know who the author of that book is? Well, everybody's name has been changed to protect the innocent in the book. So my name in the book is Guy, G-U-Y. Oh. And the lady that wrote the book, his name is Ellen. And her uh, author name is Ellen Weiss, W-E-I-S-S. But that's not a real name. Oh, okay. But for the time you're reading it, it's just so you know, Guy is me, Ellen is the lady who actually wrote the book. We could get into that in real detail, but I think it's better to read what you see there because it'll explain a great deal more about my business background than what I've given you here. Very good. And how did you come to Oregon? Oh, the easy way, because I, I moved to Arizona first, business reasons. Every time I've moved, it's been for business, until I came here. So moving to Arizona was easy because I needed to take a job there, like all the other moves I made. But moving to Arizona was pleasant enough. And uh, when I sold the business in Arizona, in Phoenix, I just decided I'd like to live in a cooler, uh, greener place. And this is definitely cooler, and it's very green, 
and they have some wonderful things going on here. There's some very nice people live here too. Can you tell us a little about your business in Phoenix? Well, the Phoenix business <coughs> was mostly <coughs> trade show displays. <coughs> Excuse me. Trade show displays, um, the kind of thing you put up in the, the booth to and get people to come in to talk to you about what you have to sell. And I was at that for like 10 years and did pretty well at it. Finally sold the business and moved up to Blackstaff uh, in a cabin that we bought together. And that, that's a long involved story. But from Blackstaff, it was up here when I realized that we could manage up here very nicely without uh, getting a full-time job. So we got a job as a camp host, and we've been camp hosting up till recently. We're now fully retired. At this point, I don't have a job of any kind. Dad, can I get you to move to your left a little and get your face in the sun just a little bit more? Thank you. We can see you better that way. That's good. Um, I don't think the camera is aimed right at me. No, it's not aimed right at you. Okay. It's uh, close, but you're you're still in the All right. video there. So I wanted to ask you also about uh, history, how you've seen history change uh, in this country and in the world. Well, I developed my skills as, as a salesperson during the 50s late 40s, 50s, and 60s, but I really feel that the best time of our, in our country's background, or while I was alive, was in the 50s up till the middle 60s. I'm not sure why that is, except that things were better, prices were pretty stable, everybody had a job pretty much, and it just seemed to be an easier way at the time to get by and, and to get along. Uh, there's been a lot of, I think, ugliness happening just by expansion. It just keeps getting worse. As, a, as I age, I realize that there aren't as many nice people, really nice to each other, as there were in the 50s. And maybe because the economy was so stable and everything, there were fewer people living here too then. A lot fewer people and there wasn't as much animosity as in racial or uh, job classification, that kind of thing. You didn't have to make a lot of money to be accepted by your neighbor. And I think that's changing now. People with big incomes are considered more important than ordinary people that have a factory job. A plumber or a barber could live better in the 50s than they can today. And who knows exactly why that is, I have never figured it out, except that it is very obvious to me that those years were the, our best years. And there were a lot of people born in the 60s, a lot of kids were born. I think families felt better about having kids in those years, and that's changing, I think. More and more people are thinking, I don't want to bring kids into this kind of world. And that's a shame, but back in the 50s and early 60s, that wasn't the case at all. Huh. It was more likely to be that people would have two or three kids. And now there's a lot of husband and wives who don't have any kids at all. Going back to some of what you talked about already, I wanted to ask, uh, how many places have you lived in your life? How many states? In all, I think there have been Florida, Michigan, Illinois, Arizona, California, Oregon, that's about it. Did you live in Florida for a while? Yes, I, did, I did. did not know. And of course, South Dakota, you were in the Air Force. So but That wasn't considered my home. Yeah. I still had a driver's license that said Illinois while I served in the service. It's not like moving to South Dakota. Yeah. I, I yeah. never applied for a South Dakota driver's license, so the, the government even considers your home or your driver's license. Is. So we have just a few minutes left. Is there anything else you'd like to share on this video? Well, if you're watching this and you've met me, you might not find anything exciting or new. But if you're, you never have met me, 
I'm sure glad that you're watching and you're listening because maybe there's a few things that you'll learn from this that you can't learn in school or at church. And I sure hope you're going to some church today that seems to be another problem. We're losing a lot of churchgoers. But that's just one of the things that is happening. Yeah. Without anybody doing it. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here, unless there's uh, any other topic you'd like to share. I appreciate your time here sharing this with us today. Thank you now. Okay.